Oh, hello. 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 Happy uh, Saturday. Yeah. Happy Saturday. You know, if you watched the, uh, the first show I did today, the Best Buy 4K Black Friday Target shopping spree, not spree, just grabbed a couple of things and you went with me. Uh, you heard me say, look, I might wear the Jam Jams tonight. If you didn't see it, you don't know what I mean by Jam Jams. But unfortunately, I'm not wearing the Jam Jams because uh, I like my clothes to have a very snuggle, you know, uh, smell to them. A, a nice laundry detergent smell. So I got to wash them. I got to throw So they're in the, they're, they're hanging up right now. I can't, I can't dry those pajama tops or else they will shrink. This is not what you tuned in to see. But anyway, we are here, and it's a power hour. We're going to do a Saturday Night Power Hour, um, a special episode, very special episode of the Power Hour. Uh, why? Uh, because uh, I, I didn't do it right. That's why. I am a bit of a moron. Yeah. Am I? No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> I... Uh, we're going to do a power hour, but uh, my phone is recording, so I had to t I had to take a picture of the question that was sent to me on the children's mother's phone, and I, I have to read it, and I thought that I had taken a picture of it with my phone, which wouldn't have made any sense. You can't take a picture. You do a screenshot. It doesn't matter. I just, I'm sorry. We um, A little blooper there. Anyway, uh, a special episode tonight of the Saturday Night Power Hour. Uh, you know, the Saturday Night, the, the Power Hours are un unhinged, right? So we can ramble and we can do it. Uh, I hope you're all enjoying your Saturday night. Um, we are. We are. I, I, I declare we are. I believe we are. Tonight is AEW Full Gear, so we'll be getting a pay-per-view tonight. It starts at 7. That's the pre-show. And uh, we're going to bust out the uh, the popcorn machine. Uh, you did see that popcorn machine in the, uh, in the uh, Christmas movie that I watch uh, show that I did. I did a show where I talk about my Christmas movies that I watch. And in the background is this gigantic full-size movie theater popcorn machine that I got for free, uh, donated, not donated, but given to me from a fire department that I did some work for. And they said, uh, here, take our popcorn machine. You're a good guy. And I said, okay. And we have movie popcorn here. Um, yeah, we're going to get the pay-per-view tonight and we're going to, uh, we'll, we'll play some video games before that. Uh, Liam lost another tooth today, which is absurd because uh, it was just loose this morning and his obsessive compulsiveness uh, tore the tooth out, likely before it was ready, uh, because he wants a gift tonight. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, anyway, why is this a special power hour? Well, because we have a question and a, and a package to go along with the question. Yeah. Because my man Rex, my man Rex sent a question, but then at the end of the question, he said, I got some stuff to send you for Christmas as a thank you for the content that you create. And I thought, well, stop it, Rex. That's, that's ridiculous. You don't have to thank me for content. You're already thanking me for content by watching. But he said, no, 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 I insist, or, or some variation of that. And, uh, Today there's a package, so we're going to open this first, and then we're going to and then we're going to read the question from Rex, and I think it's going to be a good one because he asks about high school, and so we get to go deep in the personal vault, right? Deep in the personal vault. But let's open this first from a man Rex. It's coming all the way from uh, Virginia, which is very nice, and uh, I have no idea what's in here. So we are going to open it together. We're going to be careful because I think that it's probably like right up to the envelope. I have no idea what Rex was so generous, kind enough to send me for the collection. And again, I don't want to rip anything. So now we're going to do this. We're going to cut. There we go. And you're going to see it for the first time with me. What did... What did Rex send? 
So he said that there is something in here, and then there's some other stuff in here. So he said, don't throw this out. Oh, oh, he wrote it. Oh, Merry Early Christmas, Jason. Thanks for all the content. May the 80s live forever, Rex. Thank you, Rex. Thank you very much. We'll get into what's in there. But he sent me a message. He said, don't throw this out. There's something in here. So we're going to get in here. Let's see what it is. Let's see what's in here. I don't know. we got to peel the painter's tape off. I like that. We'll peel that off. And we'll see what's in here. I assume it's some kind of a piece of paper or a picture of some kind. I appreciate his protectiveness. My man Rex. I think we can get it out now? Yeah. All right, what do we got? It's a poster of some kind, it looks like. There we go. We have a poster. Could be anything. Could be anything. <laughs> Whoa, Rex. Whoa. Oh, my goodness. Guys. This is official. This is incredible. Rex just sent me an actual, authentic 1988 7-Up Christmas countdown. Wow. Uh, this is incredible. My man Tom Strickland uh, made me a, uh, a, a copy of 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 this concept but this taking nothing away from that of course this is your original this is incredible this is getting framed this is getting framed and it's going up here so you have just added to my wall but this is special really really special because i never was able to get one of these in the store when i was a kid i was never able to get one never able to find one of course, my mother didn't care enough to go find one, but I've always wanted. And this, this is what started me doing my own Christmas countdown because I could never get one of these. Ah, this is really good, Rex. This is like really good. You, the, there's a very, very personal backstory on this. I just told you a little bit of it, but ooh, look at that! It's got NutraSweet in there, kids. NutraSweet. Yeah, no problem there. No worries there. Drink it up, kids. Drink up your NutraSweet. Don't worry about the lab rats. They were supposed to die. Whew, boy, this is good. This is 1988, guys. This is special. I, I hate to keep going on about it, but this is special. Thank you. I can't even, I don't even want this anywhere near the liquid. But thank you. That is, uh, yeah, that's not going to go on this wall because this wall is going to go over there eventually. So when we redesign the um, the 80s living room, that's going up. Not just at Christmas, it's going up all year round. Thank you so much. That is an insane present. Let's go in and see what else we got. Well, more stuff. More, uh, more pictures or something. I don't know. Let's see what we got. I'm already, I'm already a little... Uh, a little uh, overwhelmed by that. I'm a little overwhelmed. Um, yeah. Oh my goodness! Whoa! Oh my! Look at this, guys! Wow! This is insane. We have from Rex WrestleMania three cards from tops we've got rocky uh, 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 here sealed packs of rocky four cards we have two sealed packs of rocky four here's the first one here's the second one and what do you know coincidence coincidence no it's just people who watch the show they know they know who i am they know what they're watching the Growing Pains cards from Tops. Unbelievable. You know what? So many people have sent me cards over the years. Magnum P.I., Michael Jackson, um, 
a team growing pains i'm going to make at least at least a 16 by 20 frame of all the cards that i have and that's going to be part of the new room wall art so rex you have unintentionally changed the art layout of the new 80s living room when it happens the new new 80s living room when it happens in the new year early 2023 guys maybe like the first you know we'll see maybe even after christmas when all this stuff is out of here i might start moving stuff around we might start early but we're going to do a, a frame of all these individual cards and we're going to hang that in the new new 80s living room that is insane rex you have gone above and beyond i can't thank you enough that is fantastic i will open these and look at all of them i just do that and then i'm going to frame some of them like i said but this is an unexpected and unbelievable addition to the collection wow an original christmas countdown from seven up 1988 insane wow thank you rex so this show is dedicated to Rex entirely. Um, uh, now let's get to his question. Whew, man, I gotta, this is where I would take a break if I wanted to do any editing, but I don't. That was a good enough break. Man, you just got me, you, you're taking me back, man. You got me thinking. 88. I mean, I was still 12, so I was still like hardcore. Um, yeah, yeah, that would have been on our fridge if we had one, not a fridge. We had a fridge. My mother wasn't that bad, but we had uh, that, that Christmas countdown would have been in our fridge and we would have done the, you know, and the crazy part of those things is like kids would have wanted to use glue to glue on the, um, cotton balls. And then the, then it would have been ruined. So the, you know, was there ever like a responsible mom who was like, no, we're going to use tape because you're going to ruin it. But like, I would assume that all of these would have glue on them, right? Because you got to glue the beard on. But uh, yeah, I don't know, Rex, you threw me off, man. I'm, I, I'm, I'm like all, I'm all twisted here. That was a really good one. <laughs> that was really, really special. Like I said, Tom Strickland sent me one. Um, a beautiful poster, a beautiful high glossy poster of that image, the Santa image with all of the beard. Um, hang on, I have that up here. Yeah. I have this right here. This is the one that my man Strickland sent me. You know, um, a reprint, which is beautiful. Just incredibly beautiful. I loved it. I still do. And now we have an original to go along with it. That is... I'm going to put this back because I don't want to, I don't want to like lay stuff all over the floor. So just bear with me. I mean, come on. What do you guys got to do? It's Saturday night and you're watching me on YouTube. So, you know, our social life is, is all pretty much the same. So we're good. Settle down. All right. Let's get to his question. He says, uh, <clears throat> Hey, Jason, keep up all the fabulous content coming. I can't thank you enough for the hours of entertainment and allowing me to reminisce about my childhood in the greatest decade ever. Uh, talking about the 80s is both happy and sad. Agreed uh, for me. The great memories that come back to life with your stories warm my heart, but then there's the sadness of knowing those days are gone. Love the show. Keep doing what you do. Here are a few questions for the Power Hour. Yeah, I, I agree entirely, man. Um, and, and getting a gift like that... Um, again, is both happy and sad because it's like, oh, man, you know, I, every every morning I leave for work, um, I don't remind the kids to fill in, you know, to color in the day of the Christmas countdown. They do it on their own. And that still makes me happy that I come home every day. And I don't even I don't even say anything. I just kind of look because it's on our door. It's on the door that like goes out to the garage. So as I come in, I just kind of look at it. And it's colored in, and that, that that makes me happy that they're doing that. So, um, but yeah, it is, it is bittersweet. All of this is bittersweet. This whole room is bittersweet. All right, here we go. I don't know, we might get stuck on the first question. <laughs> it, it'll be a talk, probably. But he says, uh, Jason, what were you like in high school? Jock, 
nerd, overachiever, outsider, geek, metalhead, quiet, shy? I have my guess, but thought I'd ask about your high school experience. Uh, that's a good one. And, uh, we, you know, we got to go deep on that. We got to, we got to go deep, um, to, to set up that question, because you know, that's what I'll do on this channel. Uh, you know, I was on track if, if, if the parental catastrophe of divorce didn't happen, I was likely on track to go all eight grades of St. Pius Catholic school with the same kids that I was in, you know, fifth and sixth grade with. And then you say, well, some of them might have moved. They didn't because I was, I was still pals with one of the kids, with Howie, uh, into high school and beyond. And so I know some of the kids, most of the kids stayed right there in the, uh, in the Catholic school. And then most of them went to this local Catholic high school called Aquinas. Um, that's likely would have, would have been the course. I would have, I would have gone to Catholic high school, not for religious reasons, but just because that's the groove that I was in. I would have gone there and I would have, you know, who, who knows what would have happened. But I, I don't like to think like that because it, it changes the whole course of life. Uh, but instead, I was taken out of that, uh, out of the comfort and the um, the really just, you know, benign innocence of a Catholic school and pushed into uh, a public school. And I did fine sixth, seventh, eighth grade. I did fine. I had, I had, um, I had some good friends, a couple of good friends. I was never uh, a guy that wanted 27 friends. I did not want a crew. And that started in like eighth grade, or like eight years old. You know, I, I had like the most friends I've ever had in a row or at the same time as like four. Right. And that was when I was a little kid and we and they were all neighborhood kids. They were all neighborhood friends. When I when I got to public school, I think sixth grade was kind of tough or seventh grade, whenever the seventh grade when I got there was kind of tough because, um, you know, I didn't know anybody. Uh, but it, but in, you know, seventh and eighth, I had, you know, I had a couple of good friends. Well, then ninth grade comes along and um I had a best friend in ninth grade, and I, I think I had two best friends in ninth grade, and we were we were all close because we had all gone on the eighth grade Washington trip together. We got the hotel together because in the eighth grade Washington trip, you picked like three of your best friends to get a hotel with or to share the room with. And so the guys that I shared the room with in eighth grade Washington trip were still my best pals in ninth grade. And it was down to like three at that point. Um, and I was doing fine. Uh, I wasn't, uh, at no point in my life w in school was I ever popular. I never played any sports, so jock is out. I, I guess nerd who didn't embrace nerd. Like I tried to be cool, so I would wear, I would wear what I was supposed to wear according to other kids. You know, so I remember like, you know, I had to have starter football hats. I had to have, um, I wore British Knights in school and K-Swiss. And so I would wear those because either the commercial told me to wear them or some other kid had them. But I would always have cool shoes without knowing that I had cool shoes. And um, that was ninth grade. And then it was downhill from there. It was downhill academically. It was downhill socially from there. And again, I hate to blame my mother. Because <laughs> um, I lived with my... No, I can't blame my... I, can't, I guess I can't blame anybody. Like, I think clothing was a real, like, downfall. Because I, I didn't, I didn't have like cool clothes, you know, like I didn't, I didn't have popular clothes. And so like, 
I don't know. There's just so much that defines you as, you know, defines your status in high school. You know, who are you friends with? What clothes are you wearing? You know, that kind of thing. Um, and the one, one awful thing happened. I was best friends with this kid and we were really close. And, um, then he skyrocketed in popularity due to like the most stupid thing ever. He, he, I, I kid you not. He danced to Saturday night. He danced to staying alive in the hallway after lunch. That's it. That's it. He spread the rumor throughout school that there was, that this kid was going to blast the Bee Gees staying alive in the hallway after school and he was going to 70s dance to it. Okay. And he did. And I remember like all these kids running out of the cafeteria to stand near this dude's locker. And this was my best friend at the time and stand near his locker while he played the tape blasted them. I mean, like teachers were standing there watching and all he did was like dance in a circle of kids. Like they all made a circle and he just danced to staying alive. And it was just seventies dancing and it was stupid. It was so stupid. And he became the most popular kid in the world at that point. He's dating seniors. Now at this point, he's a sophomore. He is gone. So here we are at the beginning of 10th grade. Here we are. <laughs> here we are at the middle of 10th grade. I'm gone. He's up here. He didn't take me with him. And so I just, poof. And remember, I relied on one friend at a time. So by the end of 10th grade, I had no friends. I was friendless. I did not have a person. And um, it was all because this kid had taken off. And to this day, I hate him. I hate him, you know, um, for that. But uh, uh, then, then I moved into, uh, so my grandma's, you know, I was at my grandmother's. And um, from previous years, maybe a couple years earlier, uh, my mother lived in an apartment complex. I would live there occasionally back and forth with my grandmother's. Before I was in there full time. And there was a kid in the complex who was a grade younger than me. And, and he became my best friend. So in 11th grade, I was best friends with a 10th grader. And because we lived near each other. And we were, we were best friends. We hung out all the time. Um, but I didn't have anybody in my own grade that I was friends with. So I would rely on this kid. And then he had friends. So I was kind of like sort of friends with his friends. You know, these are the kids that we'd play football with and basketball and um, I had friends at an apartment complex that I was living in before my grandmother's. Uh, they were a grade younger. So it was always like kids a grade younger than me I was best friends with. And that was fine. Um, but my 11th grade class, I, I was, you know, I was invisible, man. I was, I was invisible. I was, uh, I was not a good student. I was a very bad student. I didn't care about anything academic. Um... Uh, you know, I wasn't dating. Uh, I, it, I was, I was just kind of not. Uh, it was bad experience. Um, I hated it. I, I hated high school with every ounce of hatred I could possibly have. Twelfth grade was even worse because, um, um, again, it just continued. And I was, and I was friends with the eleventh grader now, and. I was invisible. In fact, when you go like, like uh, there's a, I, I found a class list, like an old class list from 94, my, my, my high school, there was, a, and, and I, as I scroll down the names, I don't recognize two thirds of the names at all because I wasn't friends with anybody in my grade. Um, and I just, I just hated, I hated it every single day. I hated high school. Um, I did not try in any class. Um, I failed three out of four years of high school. I had to go to summer school three out of four years. And um, it was deplorable. It was just a miserable experience. Um, 
I was not like depressed or suicidal or anything like that, but I just hated it. I hated being there. And if I didn't have this younger kid friend, I would be lost. I would have had nobody. Um, it all changed. I mean, don't worry. I When I got out of high school, um, I was working in the mall. And I became, at 19... Yeah, at 19, I became a store manager. It, I don't know why I'm using air quotes. It really was store manager. I wasn't just store manager. I was store manager of a, of a store called Lids. There are still Lids today. It's a hat store. It's different than it is. Like now Lids sells t-shirts and like you can get your own hat made and with your own logo. We, it, we didn't do that. But when I became the store manager of that store, my... My um, my confidence skyrocketed. Um, my popularity skyrocketed because I was now like running this store on Fridays and Saturday nights. I would I would work open to close in the store because it was better than a social life. It was the social life in a good way. It was incredible. Um, I started dating for the first time. That was awesome, and. Uh, yeah, it, it changed from that point on. I mean, I, then I started to become who I wanted to be or who I thought I wanted to be. You know, so the confidence level was high. I could wear the clothes that I wanted to wear. Um, I, I, would, I had blonde hair. I, yes, I would, I would dye my hair blonde and then shave it. So it would kind of look like, um, like Eminem. But Eminem was not Eminem yet, so I wasn't copying him. He wasn't even like, he was still in high school, I think. But yeah, I would shave my head, and because I had really dark hair, it would come out almost like tennis ball color. But that's cool. I, that was okay. I had a couple of eyebrow piercings uh, because Jonathan Davis from Corn had two eyebrow piercings, so I got two eyebrow piercings. I didn't have glasses; I had contacts, and I was really skinny. I weighed like uh, about 130 pounds, so I was this weird, like, um, not goth, but. Just like this, I don't know, is emo? Emo wasn't a thing back then. But I was just this weird punk. I, You know, I looked like I probably should be skateboarding, but I didn't know how to skateboard. Um, I had no idea what the heck was going on. But I was getting chicks <laughs> from the mall, and that was a good time. And I and I just rolled with that. That's that's who I was for a while. Um, but I, but so, so the high school experience was dreadful. Two months after I got out of high school, the mall jobs, you know, push you up. And um, I get, I don't know what, I guess it was just getting out of an environment that already knew who I, or, or an environment that already knew me or an environment that already had dismissed me. And you had no chance. Like you can't reinvent yourself unless you dance to staying alive in the hallway like an idiot and and then like totally become the most popular kid in school. Um, you, I guess you got to get out. I guess you got to start over. And I did, I, I started over in the mall and just had, had a much better time. It was great. Wow. That was a long story. So there, there you go. That's who I was in high school. I don't know if I fell into a category because invisible isn't a category, but that's what I was in high school. It's okay. It's okay. I had a lot of fun from, 19 on. Trust me. Tons of fun. His, uh, his other questions. Has anyone from your past found your videos on YouTube and reconnected with you? No. No. Not at all. That, that never happened. Um, that would be cool, but uh, no. Hasn't happened yet. I have had some like patience of mine be like, um, oh, by the way, um, I found your videos and I'm like, <gasps> really? And they're like, yeah, I'm like, okay, cool. And they're like, no, they're really good. I'm like, okay, okay. Can't talk about it. Uh, he's got two more questions, but I'm drained. That high school question just really, you know, made me go deep. I'm going to, well, all right, I'll finish. He says, any memories of going to a local arcade back in the day? Favorite games or other memories? One of my favorite memories was playing the cocktail table Pac-Man arcade, or Pac-Man machine at the local pizza. 
um, I've talked about it before. My 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 most fond arcade memories were uh, not an arcade at all. Uh, it was a bowling alley. Uh, we had, uh, of course, a part of Saint, the St. Saint Pius uh, After School Bowling League that I was on in like fifth grade and sixth grade. And um, the bowling alley that we bowled at was huge. It was, it was a place called Marcel's Olympic Bowl. And the only reason like that means anything to anybody was that it was a regular stop on the PBA tour. So if you are a PBA bowling fan from the 80s, Olympic Bowl was a regular stop. Uh, Kodak would sponsor the tournament. And so it was, you know, we were, we were on ABC or ESPN or whatever. Uh, it was an 80-lane center. It was massive. And in the middle of it, right, so they had 40 lanes on each side. And in the middle was an arcade, was a ton of video games. And when we would do the St. Pius League, um, we'd get there, you know, early, and we would drop, you know, 50 cents or 75 cents to play um, some games. And then as we finished the league, we'd have about 15 minutes before we had to get back on the bus. So we would quickly cram in some games then, too. Um, Double Dragon and Matt Mania, hands down. The uh, two games that I played the most and that I still have the most love for. Um, I have not played either game. And that is so weird with, you know... Um, the, the way you can, like, I don't know, what do they call it? ROMs or something? The way that you can play basically any game you want. Uh, I have not played Matt Mania or Double Dragon since the arcade days. I don't know how to, to do it. Raspberry Pi or, or um, I don't know, uh, emulators. I mean, I, I, don't know, I don't know how to do that. But uh, I would like to. I would like to play those two games again, Matt Mania and, and um, Double Dragon. I've played Double Dragon, obviously, in other uh, consoles and stuff, but I want to play the arcade game again. Um, but yeah, trying to get as much play as you could before... Because, look, if you miss the bus, you may as well die. Like, you're finished. Your life is over if you miss the school bus and you're stuck at Marcel's Olympic Bowl. It's over. So you can't miss the school bus. So there were so many times when we would leave a game unfinished. You just like walk away from it, run away from it because you got to go. Because if you miss the bus, again, I think you just disappear. I don't think you ever go home. You know, so that was always fun to try to, you know, get as much play as we could before the before the school bus took off. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I also, uh, Chuck E. Cheese, the, the original Chuck E. Cheese, you know, it was just great. Um, I remember the ball crawl uh, had coins, so the Chuck E. Cheese employees would toss tokens in the in the ball crawl, and you had to dive down and find them. And that was, I mean, it may have, it may have well been ten thousand dollars to find a coin, to find a token to get another game, a thousand bucks, right? I would have taken the coin over the thousand bucks, even though I could have got a thousand dollars worth of. I wasn't thinking like that. I just get the token. Um, yeah, so f beautiful, fond memories. You know, grocery stores having a game or two, you know, in their in their store. Um, a convenience store where uh, the childhood home there. Now you can see it even better. Where is it? Oh, it's over there. The uh, the childhood home uh, had a convenience store within walking distance. They would they they would have a, a Donkey Kong Junior. I think I remember, um, in just in the store. Um, oh yeah, so good stuff. Yeah, so that's that. Uh, he, he asked another one that I'll answer another time. It's just your basic, uh, if there was one year that you could, uh, relive. I've answered that in other, in other, uh, in other, uh, Power Hour episodes, but I'll, I'll, I'll put it aside for today and answer it when we come back and do the next one. I won't forget Rex, don't worry. Um, so we'll say Rex, uh, final question. We'll answer that. Uh, next time. Uh, but I, I wanted to go deep with the with the high school episode uh, or question. Uh, your high school experiences, of course, put them down. Did you hate it as much as I did? Let me know. And again, I don't think I would have hated it uh, as much had I stayed put. Had the uh, the divorce not happened, had we not changed schools. Um, but I can assure you that my children would not be here today had I stayed put. And that's just a weird 
a weird thought. I would not have been at the community college that I was at, the year I was at, to meet the children's mother, to go on to have the babies. I would have never met her. I wouldn't have been there. I would not have been there, right? I would have went to college on time. I wouldn't have waited five years or four years to go to college. Um, I wouldn't have met her. And so the kids would not be here. And I just don't like to go there with what if, because they wouldn't be. I'd have other kids, I assume. Probably a ton, if you know what I mean. Um, but my guys wouldn't be here, and that's no good. So anyway, how about that? How about that? Cash me outside. How about that? That's the Power Hour. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks, Rex. You are um, awesome. Thank you for that poster. It's unbelievable. We'll see you all next time. Good night now.